Hey there! In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to create a game in Godot from start to finish. That means we're going to start with an empty project and finish by building apps for iOS and Android. The game we're going to make is an infinite scroller in the vein of Flappy Bird. So similar to Flappy Bird, you need a flap to stay in the air and to avoid obstacles. However, unlike Flappy Bird, in this game you poop on people to rack up points. So you can see in the video here that you flap to stay in the air and to avoid the cacti, and then you can poop on the people below to get points. This game is actually already available to download. It's called Porta Penguin, and you can check it out for free on either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. If you want to build the game from source, you can do that too. I'm going to include the source code along with these tutorials, so every tutorial will be accompanied by a new branch containing new material. The goal of this series is to show you everything that goes into making a simple game in Godot. We'll cover the basics like creating animations and wiring up signals, and then we'll also get into more nitty gritty stuff like programmatically changing textures, looping audio, and debugging performance issues on Android. Hopefully this will serve as a helpful resource to anyone else out there who's getting started with Godot, or anyone who wants to ship their first game for iOS and or Android. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so in order to actually make our game, we first need to download Godot. So I'm here at godotengine.org. I'm going to click on download. That will bring me to the Mac OS tab because I'm using a Mac. And now we just need to decide whether or not to use the standard version or the mono version. And the thing that decides this for us is that the mono version doesn't allow exporting to iOS. And since we want to make our game available to iOS, we basically have to use the standard version. If this isn't an issue for you, then you might want to use the mono version if you want C-sharp support. But for most cases, I would say GDScript, which is the built-in scripting language that the standard version supports, is pretty good. Cool, so now that we have Godot downloaded, let's go ahead and start making our game. I'm going to open Godot from the command line because I already have another instance running. And now I'll choose where to put this project. This place looks good and I'll call it Porta Penguin Godot Tutorials. And now we just need to choose between OpenGL 3.0 and 2.0. And I'm gonna go with 2.0 because OpenGL 3.0 is not supported on some older Android devices. And let's click Create and Edit. The first thing I'm going to do is cheat a little bit and drag in some assets that I've pre-prepared. see, why didn't that work? There we go. So we can see here that I have a pink background. And so what we're going to do in this video is create the scrolling background for our game. So basically we're going to make one scene and when that scene plays, all it's going to do is have a scrolling background. That's it. So what we need to do is create a root node for our scene. I'm gonna call this main. And let's just save this for now. And we'll have a new folder called scenes. Save it here. And let's just see what happens when we run this. So what happens is we get this prompt telling us to pick a main scene, pick that, and nothing. Okay, cool. So let's add two child nodes to make things a little more interesting. One sprite, another sprite. We'll call this one background one. Call this other one background two. And then we'll drag this pink background onto both of them. And now we just need to do a little bit of resizing and repositioning. So what we'll do is, since we want our game to be 1600 by 900, that's just because it was the size I made it originally. Pixel art game should probably be a little smaller, but I didn't really know what I was doing when I made this game originally, so that's the size it is. I'm going to make the scale 10 by 10 because the images are 160 by 160. And I'm gonna put this one to the right of the other sprite. You'll see why in a minute. And then let me just re-import this image because you can see it's all blurry. That's because this filter flag is on. If you re-import it without it on, it becomes 
crystal clear. Cool, so now we have two sprites right next to each other. What happens when I run it is I see this top left bit here, which you can see on the screen. That's just because my window size is off. So I need to go to display, window, 1600, 900. And just to make things a little easier, let's set this to be a different ratio for the test width and test height, just to make it a little smaller. We'll set the mode to 2D so that it stretches down to that height. So now when we press play, we can see this sprite. Now all we need to do is make it so that the background scrolls. And the general idea here is we're going to make this sprite go to the left, this sprite continue following it, and then when this guy gets all the way over here, we're going to move it around here, and then it's going to keep on going, kind of in a uh, infinite loop. Let me just reposition this stuff. Cool. And to do that, we're going to write a little bit of code. I'm going to attach a script to each of these backgrounds, and I will put it in a new folder called scripts and I'll call it background. And what we'll do is we'll have a velocity field. And you can note that I'm using the statically typed version or kind of option of GDScript. And I highly recommend you do this just because it makes your code more readable and a lot safer. But if you want, you can omit all these types. They're not, um, they're not required. But I strongly prefer statically typed languages to uh, not statically typed. So what we'll do is in our ready function, we'll init this global variable. And then every frame, we will just update the position. And then the only other thing we need to do is if the sprite is off the left of the screen, which we will capture with this if statement. So if the position is less than the width, then we're gonna move it back to basically the right of the sprite that's still on the screen. And we'll do that by just adding two times the width. We don't want to just reset the position to the texture width. Otherwise, there will be a gap. And you can see what I mean by that in a second. But first, let's attach this script to the other one. And now let's see what happens when we run. Okay, cool. So as expected, these backgrounds are both moving. To test things a little more thoroughly, let's we see what happens when this is 15. And interestingly, you can kind of see that we get an error here because this is supposed to be a float. So we need to make this 15.0. That's just the static type checker at work. And cool. So we're just verifying that there's no gaps here. And there doesn't appear to be any. It's just one smoothly scrolling background. You can kind of see what happens if instead of adding you just did this and set the position to just be like right off the right of the screen, what would happen is you'd start getting some gaps. And that's just because the, the other sprite might be a little to the left. Like it might not align perfectly to where the screen is, if that makes sense. Anyways, you can kind of try that out for yourself, but we'll just go with this code for now. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. Um, feel free to drop a comment or leave a tweet if you have any questions or any feedback. I'm more than happy to go through and answer your questions or take any feedback about the content or the pacing. For example, if you want me to cover a certain topic or you want me to go faster or slower through certain sections, just let me know. In the next video, I'll be talking about adding the main player to our game, which is a penguin. We'll be adding some simple support for user input, 
Um, also adding a flapping animation and then adding support for collisions. So that will be coming out soon. And then just as a brief reminder, all the source code for the content we covered in these videos can be found in the description below. Um, you can also find an accompanying blog post if you'd rather read about this, this material or just want a secondary source to kind of follow along with. And yeah, I think that's it. So I'll see you next time.